allow me to give you a certain insight about what we're about to talk or discuss right now. And I do hope my microphone is uh, working properly. I've made sure it is. There's no static sound, I do hope so. And so here we are. We all know Japanese is all about another language. You could consider this as your third language. The second one, which is English, which you, we are very most astute. And uh, we know a lot about it. So it's not difficult for us anymore. And we could speak language in English whenever and wherever we want to. But this is different. This is Japanese. Or maybe on the succeeding weeks, you would be learning about other languages such as the other guest speakers that would cater their services unto you. There's German and the other language that might be also be catered in the near future. This is not common to us. So therefore, we need to learn about this. And what better way could it be than to do it in this kinds of webinar series? This is all about the aesthetic approach about Japan. And it doesn't require a lot of time. I'm just going to tell you about the specific terms and uh, we'll just go on the in-depth approach later. So as the prologue out here, I would just like to ask a certain question to everyone. Have you ever been to abroad? If your answer is yes, well, there's no problem with that already. And this picture right here might be significant to you. It's a very memorable place. But for those who are probably not in the way to say, no, I haven't been to abroad yet. Maybe someday, right? Who has the right to, doesn't have the right to dream. And we hope that this question a while ago, have you ever been to abroad, could be the next opening remark to each and every one of us. I can see leaders from each uh, expertise, your companies, your offices, students that are working on their career to success. We hope that this question could be the next opening remark when you're supposed to be the one delivering your own speech. And that's what's important. See, thing is, it's very exceptional for me. My dad was a visionary. Planning ahead through sheer imagination, he would used to say, if he can do it, then so his children, so his uh, children could be. And that's it. He used to say, you know, when you have the chance to step your foot in that certain departure area right there, just uh, marked with the red. Everything would be different, totally different. That's true. I mean, let's face the truth, not everyone could ride an airplane, let alone travel abroad. It's a privilege, it's not a right. Not everyone has the chance to do so. Still, it's a big question that would you let that kind of thing stop you from pursuing your dream? And you might be wondering what is what this thing has to do with what we are discussing right now. If you would allow me to share a story about a certain kid who was once had a dream, and it's quite funny that it happened through sheer will and hard work. There was once a person with a piece of paper on his hand and it was titled Simplicity. It was given by his dad, where he said, we're probably nothing right now. In the future, we could be. We just have to put our faith in it and do the work. That's it. Simplicity is about having anything without having nothing. It means you could get all the things that you want without it being there at all. And that's where it all started. 
this certain kid was hooked in what we call cartoons. No? If you would uh, believe me from res uh, with respect, the 90s was a term for cartoons, which is now translated by our new generation of individuals, anime. And he was quite amazed by how these things, drawings, move on the screen. It was a total bliss for him. Every afternoon, since that's the respective schedule for school, after school, he would make sure that he would be able to watch those things on TV. Because way back, not everyone has the privilege to have their own computer. There was a time that the parents noticed what the kid was doing. And since parents has no privilege of having a principal, as what they should say in some quotation, They saw him watching cartoons, not studying that well. So the parent's reaction would be like, this is good. No, looks like you're having fun on what you're doing. But let me ask you something. Are you learning something from what you're doing? Uh, would this benefit you in the future? This would become a very big deal with you. Could you improve yourself as an individual? by doing these things. Usually there are times when we would look at our kids and then they would say, yes, somehow this could help me. I'm enjoying it as well. Therefore, it could be beneficial to me. But those kinds of questions that would come out from your parents' uh, speech would make you go, this is game over. Time to stop this, right? The kid was persistent and he was curious. He had to know more about this cartoon thing, where it came from, how it started, how would he benefit from it? And that's where the term Japan came in mind. So the kid knew this thing was not from the Philippines itself. It was made from another place. And that was Japan. That kid, when he was on elementary level, he was uh, aiming to be something. He wrote on a piece of paper, what do you want to be when you grow up? Game success to be a computer scientist, so he became a scientist in a way. That's it, and he was successful. Sure, there are problems along the way, hindrances. We all know about that. We all been to hardships just to create and to reach our goals and to be successful and say to ourselves, congratulations, you have made So that's about what we should need to understand. We have to be assertive of our dreams. There's always a saying that when you doubt about your power or when you doubt your power, your power gives to your doubt or you give power to your doubt. And that's what we don't want to happen. 
we must not get pessimistic in a way that even if it's difficult, why do I need to study this kind of language when I have no means to use it in the future? Just like what a person would say when it is not relevant to him, or even if someone is very motivated, but somehow had the chance to encounter these hindrances, and he would say, time to give up. So it's not should be that kind of way. We have to keep that certain positivity in check. And so here we are at our alma mater, New Era University, where almost all of our colleagues here at the university doesn't let that certain doubt give in to them or overpower them. What do they do instead? Instead of embracing doubt, they prefer to spend it on teaching 100% of their abilities almost every day. Who are those collective colleagues that we're talking about? Our beloved teachers at the university, our certain brothers in the faith is always giving their 100% to the parents who always help their children to study just to know that they are learning something. To the children that are giving their all, our beloved students, the stockholders of the university, they're the ones that giving us the motivation to keep going. However difficult it is that we could make it in our lives, but we just say time to wake up, get up in the bed and face these things again and again. That's why we have academic teaching personnel here at the New Era University, which we could truly say dedicated in creating students from our university, a world-class students, which is of course molded with Christian values. Well, and so that kid was successful in his endeavor because he knew he could entrust his dreams to the New Era University. Probably some of the teachers or our colleagues from the college have also experienced and they owe it a lot to the New Era University. The kid was successfully, or he successfully went abroad. He learned Japanese culture, everything that needs to be known about it the aesthetics, perhaps. And now that kid is proud to serve all this knowledge to the school up until present. And it's right here in front of you with a decent proposition. What is that proposition? We'd like you to join us in this endeavor, to gain this opportunity, not just to be a common linguist, but the best linguist that you can give upon yourself. This is not just some simple webinar when you think, why is this person right here, right now? Is it because he just wanted to join? Is it because it is the need for the appearance or attendance? Or probably he was just motivated and curious what's in the seminar and how would this benefit each and every one of us. So we'll leave that uh, proposition to you. We hope you could implore us, you could indulge us with that uh, invitation. And with that said, that's about Japanese aesthetics. A part on which we want to apply the culture appreciation while studying Japanese language itself. We did the math. No? I would just like to share this other piece with you. If the university would let me, hope they will. These are copies from the NUBLE or the New Era University Virtual Learning Environment. This is what the syllabus would look like when you would 
try to search it on the new Blick. This was four years ago, and this is uh, prone to be revised. Like I've said, we did the math. We talked with the other teachers, colleagues from the departments. We told them, is this still working for the students? I mean, what should you learn about Japanese language? Simply Japanese. That's it. When we look upon the syllabus, it is clearly stated everything that you can see in there most likely is written in Japanese. So the goal was realized. It has been met. But it's not enough. We made studies upon the students' behavior upon learning the subject. And we have learned that seven out of ten uh, Yes, yeah, seven out of 10 students are not satisfied. Not satisfied with what? Learning language by itself. Sure, you can be great at speaking conferences. You can be understood by a Japanese personnel. Or let's not just limit ourselves with Japanese. There could be other language that would be endorsed and catered to you in the succeeding weeks. You might be good at that one. You might be proficient, fluent, but if someone would ask you, how would you react when the sequence is performance? And this is it. You can talk all you want, but you cannot walk the talk, which is not good. So that's where aesthetic comes in. We want to keep that certain motivation from the students to keep on learning language, but this time with proper aesthetics. When we say aesthetics, probably it would be that much uh, deep to you. It's the appreciation of art, of nature, about a certain topic. So it's not just simply speaking Japanese, but it's about learning Japanese through aesthetics. So what should you understand about that? It's not about speaking out of your mind, but learning how to appreciate the food, how to know that these things are actually the structures in Japan, how every part usually sprouts up on a simple industrial unit or city because they still appreciate nature, even if there are many buildings in the city. How to greatly admire everything that they would offer you there. Things that for the generation today is quite uh, dazzling. I think that's the term. You'd say they have all those amenities that you could enjoy. How that certain 100,000 yen from a 50,000 way back 2020, that was the foreign exchange. Now it's like 33,000. But would you mind buying that certain piece of toy or appreciation, just put it in your house, probably for luxury and all those things? Statues that represent the history of Japan whether it is fantasy or historically, those kinds of things. And there's still some exotic type things that you wouldn't experience here in the Philippines. It's like, they really have those kinds of things. I mean, it's for experience and for you to share it with everyone when you would go back to your own home soil and then live to tell the tale. Certain places, just like the province there, when he had the chance to go way back, probably you would say this is nothing different from us. That's just East Woodley Beast, probably. That's just the MRT right there. This one is SM North. And probably all the stuff like, oh, that's probably on Taal, or sorry, uh, Albay, the flower show their sightseeing, and many more. 
the certain foods that they usually serve in their country is not that different here anymore. You see, these kinds of things, we have that uh, what we call Genki Sushi. No? A certain restaurant, probably you are around Quezon City area, there's a certain place for that uh, eatery, that restaurant, where you don't need to stand up anymore. You believe that. You usually stay up on a long queue at McDonald's and then you would say, when is my turn to get a burger or a decent value meal? Well, this one, all you have to do is just to sit and then probably you pick on that machine-oriented system and there will be a train-like structure with the food that you want, which is already there. Not every one of us probably had the experience to eat in this kind of restaurant, but it's part of aesthetic. And when you would go there, you would understand this is how it works. No? And then we all know about the certain noodles that we usually love, especially this generation today. It's not just common lakimi or nice and cup noodles. It's what we call ramen. No? And then, yes, you can uh, have the chance to eat it right now on our place because everyone is bringing the food from abroad to here. We have takoyaki. We have ramen. So the aesthetic is uh, really uh, easy to identify because it is already here. And all you have to do is to impose it on the certain syllabus to make language more interactive to learn. And pretty much that's it. As the first one to present to you about these things, which is supposed to be the first webinar also. I think this is the opportunity to also give you an insight on what you're about to experience on the succeeding weeks. This is supposed to be a week long or month long seminar or webinar where it's not just simply Japanese. You might say probably Japanese is not on my alley. Are there any other languages that could be used or I could use to improve myself, become a better individual, adding this as my skill. Yes, I think we have uh, English, much more modified English by Dr. Fabelia on the succeeding weeks, learning German language to our very own Dr. Malu Francisco, other languages, also my colleagues from the College of Arts and Sciences, which is usually based on their School of Graduate Studies, Dr. Vidal Mendoza and his uh, wife, Dr. Dela Mendoza, would also give you insights on how to improve your skills on Japanese with the combination of Filipino elements. So from those kinds of webinars that are available, from this one, to the last one, we said a while ago, may it be a decisive moment for you to embark on this journey, which is language studies. Our team of language teachers who are willing to impart their esteemed knowledge about these things to help with the endeavor of our university, to the aim and spirit of our church administration, which they would say, we are now globally. And I think there's also some things from the good book would say the family is growing. We must build our tent, a bigger tent. So the aim is to go globally. And how could we help? By immersing ourselves with Japanese. And you will notice that when you decide to enroll and these programs, and you would see yourself from a few years from now, let's say four years to five years, you could probably assess yourself, have I improved that much by joining in this certain language studies? But simply, we would all be God willing, 
alive five to ten years from now, and we could just see ourselves being successful about where we have been from the start and how we have been successful in the future. So we hope that this seminar have helped you or webinar helped you realize your opportunities and priorities to enlist in this university program. And please remember, it's what you decide right now, which truly makes a difference. On behalf of all the major proponents, our brothers in the faith, from Dr. Bibian Buhain, our uh, very own colleague from the CBA, the purposive communication teacher, very fluent in English, Dr. Remedios Fuentes, and the whole family, from uh, also my friend, Dr. Feljon Fuentes Jr., my mentor, to our brothers in the faith, Dr. Sal de Petorio, from keeping this uh, webinar possible. To all the other proponents out there who has a major part in this said program. And of course, our church administration always nurture us with their unending passion and love for the church. They want us to improve. And this university is part of that church administration on which we have to do our part and to share the wisdom and create Christian molded students. So thank you very much, and we hope you have enjoyed our webinar. Maraming salamat po. Hanggang dyan po ang aming bahagi.